Cigar City Radio is sponsored by No Clubs and StateMedia.com. Find out about upcoming concerts in Tampa Bay by visiting StateMedia.com and tagging No Clubs on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Use the hashtag WeAreConcerts. Here's what No Clubs has coming up. Saturday, October 5th, Graveyard in Black Mountain at the Ritz Ebor. Friday, October 11th, Built to Spill with the Keep It Like a Secret Tour coming to the Orpheum. Two nights, Sunday, October 13th, and Monday, October 14th, you can catch Taking Back Sunday with Red City Radio. Both of those shows are at Janus Live. Wednesday, October 16th, Bea Miller with the Sunsets and Outer Space Tour coming to the Orpheum. Thursday, October 17th, Face to Face and Lag Wagon with H2O at the Ritz Ebor. Tuesday, October 22nd, Andrea Gibson and Mr. Buddy Wakefield are going to be at the Attic. Tuesday, October 22nd, Alter Bridge and Skillet, the Victoria Sky Tour with Dirty Honey coming to Janice Live. Friday, October 25th, Young Gravy Experience the Sensation Tour with Toop and Savage Realm coming to Janice Live. Friday, October 25th, The Main presents The Mirror and Twin XL at the Orpheum. Sunday, October 27th, Sabrina Claudio brings the Truth Is Tour with Gallant to the Ritz Ebor. Saturday, November 2nd, The Neighborhood with Slow Hollows and one of my personal favorite new artists, Claude, coming to the Ritz Ebor. Sunday, November 3rd, Scotty Sire with Toddy Smith featuring Bruce Wagner and Chris Bloom. This is called the What's Going On Tour, and that's basically the question I have. What's going on? Well, it's going on November 3rd at the Orpheum. For info, tickets, and more on any of these shows, head to statemedia.com. This episode of Cigar City Radio was recorded at the offices of Symphonic Distribution. Symphonic Distribution is an independent music distribution and marketing company founded by former music producer Jorge Brea in 2006, headquartered in Tampa, Florida, and with offices in Brooklyn, New York, Nashville, Tennessee, Denver, Colorado, and Bogota, Colombia, Symphonic provides new and established record labels, managers, and artists with global digital music and video distribution to hundreds of retail and streaming platforms, as well as playlist pitching, release promotion, and a comprehensive suite of label services. To learn more about Symphonic or apply for their services, head to simdistro.com. That's S-Y-M-D-I-S-T-R-O dot com. Symphonic Distribution. Distribution redefined. <laughs> I keep it going. Yeah, I can do the just just Cigar City Radio. <laughs> Cigar City Radio. Cigar City Radio. Radio. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Our guest on this episode is Strange Ranger, a band from Bozeman, Montana, now based in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. They were playing at The Hub in downtown Tampa, and uh, they walked a very far distance to the symphonic offices to come into the conference room and chat with us about a bunch of going-ons, a lot of interesting stuff. This is definitely one of the more informative podcast interviews I think we've ever done. We talk so much about super deep topics which you'll hear in the episode it's definitely uh definitely one for the history books a lot is said a lot is done strange rangers new album remembering the rockets is out now on tiny engines they are on a hell of a tour they're going to be touring later in the year as well with joyce manor and our friends chastity belt and they're a super kick-ass band that you need to check out find them on the spotify on the apple music on the titles Wherever you listen to music, find them. You can also follow them on Instagram at strange underscore ranger underscore. So here it is, Strange Ranger.
historical Tanda Theater at the offices of Symphonic Distribution and playing right next door tonight at the Hub are our new friends, Strange Ranger, coming all, all this way from Philadelphia now. I know you guys have moved around a lot. It's like Philly by way of Portland, Portland. by way of Montana. Yep. Uh, like, so you're a nomadic band? Um, if you can, yeah, we're, it's our defining yeah. feature. Like three of, locations over ten years. A traveling so. band of that, minstrels. Yeah. <laughs> three <laughs> locations. Of, when you put it over ten years, it's like okay, well, that's not that. It's that not that bad. crazy. But right. when you when you read it and it says like, it okay, sounds cool. It sounds much cooler. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Well, it's sort of like leveling up in a way, not to like put the places we lived before down, but in terms of, <laughs> in terms of like just kind of like population of places and like proximity to, to. I don't know, population of people and audience. I guess it feels like leveling up. Does it? Because I've lived in Philly, so <laughs> I don't. I don't. No, no offense to Philly. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No offense to Philly, but I mean, I'm just know. talking about like coming from like a town of like thirty thousand people where there's nothing around you for hours, and then going to the Northwest where it's like Portland and Seattle are great, but then there's like nothing else. Yeah. Whereas like Philly's close like to it. Whereas Philly's like, close to New York. And then you're in close Philly, to DC and yeah, it's so easy to go to exactly New York, yeah. DC, so many places. That makes sense. So where were you from originally in Montana? It's like a small town, right? Um, yeah, Fred and I grew up in Bozeman, Montana. We went to high school together. It's in like southwestern Montana. Um, sort of near Yellowstone Park for yeah. okay is a thing probably most people have heard of, right? So I'd imagine there's not much of a music scene over there. Um, not one that we really kind of fit into there's definitely like a pretty healthy like bar band scene with lots of you know yeah i think if you covers and and th and there are like there are like rock bands for sure making originals I think the kind yeah. of music that does really well across the mountain west is like bluegrass and like jam bands and stuff like that mm -hmm. um but now, there are there have been great like one of the best bands ever is called the touchers and they're from bozeman so the there touchers? are yeah so there oh, are yeah. there are great bands um from the area but uh, there's definitely there wasn't like a DIY scene that we were like we weren't like booking shows and stuff in high school and going and going to shows. It, it, Although ironically, there is now though, right? There is now, there is which now, is crazy. Yeah. Wow, was but it was it the strange ranger effect? You know, you guys came out. I don't think so. Out, but, but if you, I mean, well, we'll there wasn't gladly. a DIY scene in Philly either until we got. There. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fishtown right. didn't exist. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll gladly take credit for all of that, but I think realistically we had you know pretty little to do with it yeah but you should take credit for it <laughs> I, I just yeah i mean that's fine Bozeman, montana scene <laughs> absolutely 100 so so then so that basically was that the catalyst for moving to portland was you wanted more of a scene or more of like a diy culture yeah uh we wanted a bigger city we wanted to be able to play shows um um and we eventually wanted to be able to tour and you definitely can't really do those things in bozeman yeah. Yeah. We wanted to live in a city and have the things that comes with it in terms of like a, yeah. you know, an arts culture or whatever. Yeah, for sure. Or is, you're just like limited by, I don't know, when the amount of people that there are for sure. Um, Montana's great if you love being alone in like mm -hmm. the wilderness. Yeah. Which, which at is, times is, sounds great. It is great, but it's not like uh, the best way to like, you know, grow your indie rock band. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Understandable. <laughs> So then why Philadelphia? Like what, what was the, the reason behind going completely across the country from Portland to Philly? Uh, I think a combination of a lot of factors. Um, being in like the eastern half of the United States just like makes touring to like more places more frequently a lot easier. And yeah. um, Philly's a cool city. We've always enjoyed being there. There's obviously a lot of great bands there. And um I think on a personal level, all of us kind of were like feeling like a change would be good for us. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I manage a lot of bands from like the Brooklyn area. So like when we do a West Coast tour and I have to explain to them that like the drive from San Francisco <laughs> to Portland yeah. is like a day, you know, like, right, yeah. that's not it's, it's really hard to grasp when you're used to, oh, you know, D.C. is two hours away or Baltimore is an hour away or, or yeah. whatever it is. Yeah, I've know? talked to people like since I've been living out here that haven't toured in the west and they'll like refer to like or talking about going on tour or whatever something like oh that's not that bad of a drive blah 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 and i'm like 
you don't know what a long drive is <laughs> yeah. until, yeah. until yeah. you've yeah. driven it's from like, like Phoenix hours. to <laughs> Texas to Austin or something. It's yeah. like yeah. you know, you just like yeah, you don't you don't know what a drive is until you've tried to route your tour three times and each time you can't get around driving from St. Louis to Denver in one shot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then you're like, oh, okay, <laughs> maybe I just won't go home. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's rough, man. That's a that's a hell of a drive. I mean, it, like the West Coast in in the West in general is great in its own way, but definitely if the main thing you want to do is tour as much and as efficiently as possible, it's there are better places to be than Portland. Yeah, that that makes sense. Yeah, makes sense. well, it's just easy. It's easier logistically for mm-hmm. sure. Should we introduce ourselves? So no, that, no. <laughs> I mean, you can. I guess you can. The listeners will figure it out. You yeah, know, right. the, the the strange ranger super fans. They oh know, yeah, they know your voice. The real heads know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but there's actually a strange ranger voice identification app that you yeah. can just uh, listen. Oh yeah, to your yeah. It's like Shazam. It's two ninety nine. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so <laughs> that, that's it. That's all we got. Thanks. Thanks for yeah. joining us on the podcast. So, yeah. So the new LP, Remembering the Rockets, is out now, finally, right? It's, yep. it's like out and in the world. Yep. 100%. Yeah. That's correct. And that's what, you're, that's what you guys are touring on now, is, mm-hmm. is that record? Yeah. And so how did that record come about? Where did you start recording it? Who, how did you record it? What's, what's the dish? Give me the dish. The dish. Um, well, the first things we recorded for it were we made a bunch of mostly drum loops with our friend Dylan Howe, Mm -hmm. who's like a Portland-based producer. Dylan M. Howe. Dylan M. Howe, sorry. (laughs) Uh, Portland, Oregon. I've met, there's another guy. There's a different Dylan Howe uh, on, I don't know, in the UK, I think. But but yeah, so we started just going down into his basement and just putting together samples and loops and just kind of doing things that we really hadn't done before, which we couldn't have done without Dylan. Um, and then after that, we tracked a little bit of stuff. Like, I think I tracked a little bit of guitar with Nathan in our basement in Portland. Um, and this was in early 2018. Um, and then it kind of got put on hold. We recorded that EP that came out last year, I think. Um, and then <laughs> we left Portland and went to Bozeman, Montana, where we're well, from. before that, did we recorded all the drums. Oh, I forgot about that. We did record all the drums. <laughs> yeah. That's there a big are part, drums the, on the record. It's a big yes, part yeah. of the record, actually, are the yeah. drums. Um, <laughs> yeah. And so Matt Thompson recorded the drums um, in like a little studio in Portland. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we left, went to Bozeman, Montana, set up a makeshift studio in a spare room of my parents' house and recorded the bulk of the record there. Wow. So it really is like a bedroom record then? Hopefully it doesn't sound that. No, it doesn't sound like it doesn't (laughs) sound like that at all. But it's in a literal sense. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Except for like, you know, recording the drums. But um, Which again were important. Yeah. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Right. Just Just to be clear. Just to be clear. We think the drums are an important part of the record. (laughs) If you're just saying that for me, you don't have to. It's fine. But no, but you're right though. Like the the loops and like like doing all sorts of different like kind of sounds with your drums it was was quite a departure for you guys. Right. I thought it was really different from. What yeah, I mean, you had part of the before. vision for the record was definitely trying to do, like, make like beats and things like that that are beyond just like recording the band playing in a room, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's like I don't know. That's probably like half the songs are like that, and then half um, are live drums. Yeah, it seems like it's kind of a mix of like, it's almost like you're going into the electronic realm a little bit, but not really like, you know, you're like dipping your toes in there, but flirting with it. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was definitely kind of the goal was to start doing things that we hadn't done before, which were more reflective of the music that we were listening to at the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What what were you listening to at the time? Uh, I guess like a lot of kind of. I feel like, I mean, the most like obvious influence is like things like The Cure, particularly Disintegration mm-hmm. and The Lemonheads, stuff like that. Yeah. And then um, also a lot of like trip hoppy yeah. uh, vibes, kind of like those like 90s English club vibes, uh, but, yeah. which like, like a Portis head kind of. Thing. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which like Prodigy obviously is a part of, but more the, yeah, like Portis head or like Primal Scream. Massive Attack, of, Tricky. Side yeah. of things. Um, 
And then there's we. I feel like we talk about this all the time in all these interv- every interview we've done. But the the standing outside a broken phone booth with money in my hand by Primitive Radio Gods. That song yeah. was like a really big uh, deal for us. Um, and then while we were making the album, we kind of it kind of coincided with us getting into um, more, I guess, like explicitly electronic music, like One of Tricks Point Ever. Um, and then stuff like grouper, just kind of ambient music. And I think we kind of, at least personally, I feel like I kind of got into that stuff on the tail end of when the record was being conceived. So it didn't bleed in as hard as maybe I would have liked it to, but I feel like you can still hear some of that. So do you think on the next record, it's going to bleed even further? I is think that, so. Is that kind of the move? I think so. Yeah. All right. is, is the goal to eventually get rid of these guys and just have you know, just, <laughs> no, just not solo all. performances no, 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 with no. a looping pedal? No. And yeah. Well, pad. the goal is to eventually get rid of all of us. Yeah. 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 And the band, there will be no humans involved. There, it will actually be a floppy disk. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> that will will just mail ship to uh, all of the venues on okay. the tour routing, okay. and whoever's w- the sound person for the night just kind of like plugs it in. Just plugs it into their like that's MS what Kiss DOS machine. Do you yeah, guys know about exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the the plan with Kiss, you guys familiar about this? The I don't know anything the, about this plan. Tell the me. idea is that like the the whole like uh, concept of like the band Kiss. I don't know. Maybe they thought about this late. Is that they can all f- slowly phase themselves out, and Kiss is just an institution and a business basically, and right, it will have right. no previous members. But Kiss will just continue as like a, a musical product. Yeah. Well, well, it's like the Steely Dan thing, right? Is that what? Didn't eventually well, like. But I feel like Donald well, but they were st- they were still like in the band. They just like stopped playing instruments and like just like hired studio musicians to direct. I think right. it's funny though. I think that's like the way that was like the excuse that how like Joe Strummer like justified kicking Mick Jones out of the class. Clash is how it's like the Clash is bigger than all of us. <laughs> yeah. It could go on without 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 yeah. any of us without me. And it's yeah. like no, that's totally it's going to be a really fun conversation kid, I get to have with yeah. Isaac and Fred in like a year and a half. <laughs> Um, so, so that's the plan. Then, Strange Ranger is is bigger than just one member. Right? <laughs> it's bigger than just one um, person. Strange Ranger is bigger than Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna be the pull quote. You know that. Right? Like, like the, all the blogs are gonna be like, Strange Ranger says they're bigger than Jesus. That's you know, you, yeah. Well, there is a picture of John Lennon right behind. I'm talking you, so, about you know, you know yeah. physical mass. Jesus is just one person. We're <laughs> we're, we're five. So technically. Technically, Technically speaking, we're bigger <laughs> in terms of physical space, which we well, occupy. Wouldn't you say it's more like a Voltron type thing where like individually you are, you know, one thing, but then you come together as a, a larger to, beast to be Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you said that. Not me. <laughs> yes, that's I would, exactly what I would say. So how long has this iteration of the band been together? Because it seems like you guys enjoy each other's company from what I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're really we're very good actors. <laughs> um, well, what happened? So it's been, so Fred and I started a long time ago and then I guess the first of this group was Nathan started playing guitar for us. Well, actually drums on one tour. Drums. <laughs> and then I okay. To I don't even remember. So, oh, basically, like three years ago, basically I played drums on one tour and then, okay. or maybe two tours. No, cause we did that South by thing. So I did two tours. On that, drums. That's South by. Thing. And then I. And then, <laughs> I know all about that South. This by. little. The, there's a, this, this little, little festival. Music festival. And, yeah, it's in uh, Austin. Right. Maybe you've heard right. of it. Right. Okay, so that happened. He was playing guitar. Well, he was playing drums on the records, on the, on the record, and then he confusing. played guitar live. Blah, blah, whatever, whatever, whatever. It doesn't matter. I had and like then, a grass is greener, like like identity crisis thing for a while. Yeah, yeah. I'm over it. It's chill. Well, we were kind of in a position where he started <laughs> playing drums and we recorded, and then we needed another guitar player to tour. And we had another drummer at our disposal, so the easiest move was sort of just to shift things around. I think and I swapped. Mm-hmm. Have Asher played the drums, and then Nathan bumped up to guitar. And then after we made it, bumped over side to guitar, <laughs> oh, sideways to guitar. It was a I wasn't. Move. I didn't mean. Uh, yeah, you know. <laughs> but um, I didn't mean to imply any sort of hierarchy amongst <laughs> the musical <laughs> instruments. Which, well, I mean, but um, <laughs> the and then so the last record before this one was the first record we had a lot of keyboard on it. So then all of a sudden we needed a keyboard player and then Fiona started playing keyboard for us and singing as well um, a couple years ago. And then when we moved to Philly, we went through some kind of like shifting lineup things 
before Tyler started playing guitar and Nathan shifted to drums, which is, I think, where we are now. So the, yep. now, now this is yeah. the core. If I'm not mistaken, <laughs> those are the people sitting in this room yeah. right now. <laughs> as far as I can tell. It's yeah. hard yeah. to keep track. <laughs> yeah, it's understandable, you know. Everybody's going out to get their, their chicharrones and their... Mm-hmm. their exactly. Tears, <laughs> take care hitters. of whatever yeah. they yeah. got to take care yeah, of. Exactly. It's like five Jesuses for the price of one. Exactly. <laughs> I love that we're continuing Couldn't this have it better. Just let's just keep it going. Yeah. Let's keep it going. So, so, so this is. And do you all live in Philly or? Mm-hmm. You, okay, yep. okay. So, so yeah. what? So tell me, like, yeah, I, I lived, I lived in. <laughs> Thank I spent, you. <laughs> yeah, in case, in case you're, uh, yeah, I lived in Philadelphia for three months. Is all I needed, um, and. Uh, but that was years ago and it was before I was like in the music industry. So I didn't like see all this cool stuff that was happening in Philly, but like there's a hell of a scene Mm -hmm. in Philadelphia right now. And a lot of really cool bands coming out of there. So like where, where do you guys usually play in Philly? Like where's the, like the scene at now? I feel like we don't play that much. You don't play. Unfortunately. (laughs) We just moved there in like December. Well, we've been there for almost a year and we've barely played just, I think cause with touring, you can't play, in Philly, if there's like a tour book that goes through Philly, I you see. know, it's been like three right. or four shows. Is that right? Something like that. Honestly, but yeah, yeah, where have we played? We played at the Cages. Played at the Cages. Played at uh, First Unitarian. Played at Tyler's oh, house. Yeah, yeah. Played at my house, and that might be it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, you played it. Didn't you all play at the warehouse? Oh, um, and oh the warehouse. we played at the warehouse oh, yeah. Yeah. at uh, yep. and Thorna, right? No face. Oh, no face. No face. No face. Well, it all sounds. It all sounds like this could be fake places. Like you could be making up all <laughs> yeah. these. Places. That's just like warehouse. national DIY. Though. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. all yeah. fake. Yeah, yeah, it's just all made up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Our, I think my house only, isn't real. <laughs> <laughs> we only have uh, we have one more show for the rest of the year, and it's at uh, the church in November. Okay, yeah, cool. So. It's cool that they're still doing shows at the church. Yeah. Because, like, it's that's a really, a really cool spot. Cool spot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very cool spot. Definitely. The, the first time we played there, the fire alarm got pulled. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. A yeah. song into our set. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did, like, the, the oh, water start coming down? I, know. I thought it got set yeah. off by someone vaping or something. Yeah, that's pro- honestly, that that's sounds, probably true. That sounds much more fun. That would happen, like, every show, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you so think yeah. that would happen? Like, I thought somebody like, I think pulled the pulled fire it. alarm. Yeah, yeah. We're, I just think it's funny to uh, think of it as foul play, but I don't yeah. think it was. <laughs> it was sabotage. <laughs> you were being yeah. sabotage. Yeah. 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 It was definitely want to make sure nobody saw your. It set. was our. It was yeah. our enemies. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The enemies that we definitely have. Oh, but when we came back in after you know it was over, we resumed our set and finished playing the song that we had started <laughs> when the thing went off. That's pretty impressive. That was fun. Yeah. But did you start it right from where you stopped? I wanted yeah, to start, start that. would have been yeah. so mid, cool. Mid measure. To <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right in the middle of a measure. Would yeah. Isaac, Isaac had to pick up the vocals in, yeah. the middle, well, was, in the middle of a word. It was hard because we all stopped playing at different times. So it was like a really delicate kind of, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, we just like, like Tyler yeah, had to start play playing and then, so it, yeah, yeah. It was, we spent the whole time outside figuring out exactly how to do it. So I'm sorry to, to do this. This is really rude. I'm going to go pee. It's going to be like 35 <laughs> seconds. You wow. go pee. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, so Isaac's going to pee. Rude. But it's fine because we don't we don't need Isaac, Now we get to talk trash. TMI. Right. So, <laughs> so, so since Isaac's out of the room, tell me like tell me about this guy. Yeah, what's, what's, his de- what's, what's his deal? What the, well, he's weak bladder, as you can tell. Yeah, he's always going to pee <laughs> all over the place. It's a problem. Is that what he does on tour? He just pees everywhere he goes? Sometimes you have those people in the band. Yeah, you know, it's like you gotta stop van, every stop. Uh, in yeah. the van, in my sleeping bag, <laughs> in my suitcase. No, oh. um, I have to have to just do laundry constantly because Isaac's just peeing all over my stuff. <laughs> um, Sometimes he pees on his gear, which is really annoying. Uh, yeah, totally. There's a lot of insurance policies. I've been, yeah, I've been electrocuted by Isaac peeing on my. <laughs> into my amplifier this is such mid-set. a weird bit <laughs> um, well, I we, mean, we've done weirder bits let me tell you <laughs> but you know at the end of the day he's our meal ticket yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's, he's the merchandise I'll right? deal with yeah. a lot that's how the bread I'll, gets buttered I could you know? stomach a lot of piss for, <laughs> right. for, for, for this moolah keeps, yeah, as long as he just keeps standing up there Churning looking out. sexy yeah. on the stage <laughs> Yeah, it's just, you know, normally you get, it's like the, the troubled rocker thing. It's, you know, if they're peeing a lot, it's because they're drunk all the time or they're fucked up or whatever. But it's like, Isaac's just stone cold sober, yeah. just just peeing. <laughs> but, you know, you just, you gotta, it's you learn to deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a continuous, it's a continuous flow. Yeah. yeah. 
He has no valve. It's in, it's in line with, you know, his creative flow. That's just the part of it. Right, right. right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's creatively uh, incontinent. Creative <laughs> flow is a good way to describe yeah, Isaac, it. Isaac, the wonderful man, uh, we love him dearly. We do. Um, crippling chocolate Despite addiction. His, yeah, that is true. <laughs> crippling. Um, so if anybody <laughs> listening to this, if you bring Andy's mints mm. um, oh, there you go. to the mm-hmm. to the show, we would everyone would greatly appreciate it. Can I tell the complimentary chocolate thing? Please, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the other night we played at Hopscotch and Rally and, and they got us a hotel room, which uh, is not something that happens to us very often. Yeah. And Isaac was Oh, hey, he's back. <laughs> um, Isaac, oh, we weren't he, talking about you or anything. He cut himself off before he like finished the statement, but then it was so funny that he had to tell us that he was about to see. He was he was about to ask like if like nice hotel rooms get complimentary chocolate, <laughs> which is like the wait, most Isaac thing of all time. Chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> and then he was like, "Wait, no, that's ridiculous. I'm not going to say that." I was curious. <laughs> It was beautiful. If I had known, I would have had chocolate here ready for you. But that would, I mean, honestly, strike one. We should one. put that in our writer. Yeah. You honestly. should put it in why, the writer. Why is it not in our writer? Well, we only have a writer as of like two days ago that yeah. has yet to be honored. Yeah. So. Oh, well, uh, well, well, tell me what's on the writer. I don't know. Speaking of things that don't happen to us very yeah. often. Well, um, and the thing about writers is like, you know how, you know those like rock uh, star myths of like all, like a bowl of all green M&Ms or something. Like, right. like that's like, they put the the idea was that they put a hyper specific thing on the rider to mm-hmm. see if they actually read it, mm. you know. Right. So we could put Andy's mints, and if mm. they get there, we know they read it, True. you know. That's because true. who's gonna just do? Well, but that? we would have to put the mint removed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. With like the, the mint, yeah. Yeah. yeah, just the chocolate. Yeah, no, <laughs> somebody <laughs> would have to physically shave yeah. off yeah, the yeah, mint yeah, part. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Just leave the chocolate. That that is going in our writer. Yeah. Or like ask for like raisin bran, but take out the raisins yeah, from that and yeah, put exactly. in sun made raisins instead of raisin bran. The brand raisins. is the best yeah, part. Or craisins, yeah. maybe. Yeah, yeah, I always thought that would be dank. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Symphonic recently did a show with um with Killer Mike in New York, and he um on his rider he wanted uh chicken from Virgil's in Harlem, which is a great request. Except for the show is in Brooklyn. Oh and my like, god. Ha- Harlem to Brooklyn yeah. is quite a feat, but somebody had to go out there to to Harlem and wow. get. God. Get some Virgil's chicken yeah, for, for, for Killer Mike. For Killer Mike, I mean, you got to do, do it. It's you Killer it. Mike, and it's right. a pretty reasonable request. All things yeah, if considered, it's just, I mean, it's just you know. fried chicken. Also, yeah. as far as like food to get a burrow away that's going to go cold, like fried chicken's still going to be good. Mm. Yeah, he yeah. knew what he was doing. No, fried chicken's good at any point. You know, <laughs> I, I definitely, I don't blame him. You know? That's what I would put in my rider. I would, I would request like for a very every specific single thing. date that you do across the U.S. Virgil, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, 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 no. This is in New York. This is in New York. So he was played at the hub. Uh. Yeah. If he had played in the hub and he had asked for Virgil's chicken from Harlem, that would have been the ultimate power move. Yeah. That would have been the ultimate, like, you know what? Someone's got to yeah. get Yeah, yeah. Somebody, yeah. Somebody's got to or take a train or something with this fried chicken because mm. you know. Getting it through, getting that fried chicken through TSA might be a right. Thing. Somebody, right. His manager would just have to start getting a bunch of like boxes from Virgil's Chicken and then getting <laughs> fried chicken <laughs> at whatever I local yeah, town they're in and, and putting and it in them the that box. Virgil's He's like, chicken. we got the Virgil's Chicken, so it's going to be a good show. Go ahead and go out there and do a good job. <laughs> Because they give you what you wanted. But but some people really do have those like super strict requests, you know, and sometimes it's not even like food related or hospitality related. But like, for example, I had a friend that worked at NBC when Prince did uh, SNL. And one of the things that Prince requests when he requested when he performed was um, Prince doesn't like to look at pictures of other people. (laughs) That's one of his things. So like this room that we're in right now has all these pictures of all these artists. We would have to take down all the pictures. That's awesome. Wow. Wow. You can put a picture of Prince. He's fine with that. Right. But of other people, he would not. He couldn't go. Does he just them. tolerate looking at other people because he knows that it, that's beyond his control? I, I think so. The I pictures so. he could. Yeah. So you know, yeah. you know, when you like go over to someone else's house or like a family's house or whatever, and they have just an inordinate amount of like framed photographs of them yeah. on the walls. Like Prince has got to be that kind of person, right? Oh, yeah. it's you go to Prince's place. house and it's just photographs of Prince yeah. everywhere. Unlike like at my house, we have this, we bought this frame at the store and we kept the like generic couple. That's like, right. Just literally <laughs> anything other than another fucking picture of me, please. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Prince would not go for that. Prince. Yeah. That's not happening. 
Oh, so so what's on your rider then? What's what's the uh, what, what are the super specific? I mean, this is a new. This is a whole. This yeah, is a new I world really to us. You know, I don't basically know. just use like a template. Yeah, you went to riders. Honestly, here's what we did. Right, 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 right. <laughs> we had when when we opened, yeah, riders. Yeah. yeah, yeah. When we opened up the document, the, the little like Microsoft Word ninety eight Clippy guy came up and was like, "Looks like you're writing a writer. <laughs> like yeah. you should ask for a beer." I was like, "Cool, thanks, Clippy." Yeah, yeah. We got yeah. some yeah. pretty crazy stuff on there. We got beer. We got uh, hummus. Food. Oh, hummus is a good yeah. one. Food vouchers, ve- veggie platter. <laughs> That's um, I think pretty much Andy's it. Mint Andy's no mint. Mint. Andy's Andy's mint. Mint. Andy's Andy's mint with no mint. Andy's with no mint. Shave off the mint. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> motorcycle no motor. Pretty regular. Motorcycle no motor. <laughs> just just the cycle, yeah. please. Yeah. Yeah. We'll we'll hit you up when we get what we what we ask. Yeah. Let me know. The first time it ever gets fulfilled. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know like even a lot of bands now are like putting cannabis on their rider, especially when they're in like a legal state and just like. Which we actually sense. what what actually happened with our rider is that we took a rider from another band that we know and then altered it and one of the things that we took off was weed. Really? Because yeah, <laughs> nobody in the band we smokes. Don't really smoke weed. Not really. Yeah. Not really. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. I mean, I have no willpower, so like, if you are like smoking <laughs> a joint and you hand it to me, yeah. like, I will, uh, I will. This band, put it in my mouth. whose rider that we <laughs> but, uh, that we yeah. took last time we were on tour with them, mm-hmm. but they on my were own, not really. They were smoking, and we were like. Cause I, I feel like you're in a genre where there's a lot of like stoner slacker bands, you know, and I don't mean slacker in a bad way. I mean, like, you know, that's kind right. of the vibe. I hope you yeah, know. slacker's you know? just an aesthetic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but you guys aren't, aren't about that life. Um, like I'm a not- huge slacker. I just can't. I can't smoke weed because okay. it makes me paranoid. Yeah, like, I don't do shit. <laughs> yeah, I like go totally psycho if I smoke weed, so I just don't. That's probably um, good. Okay. Yeah. So, so if you're going to the show, if you're going to see Strange Ranger, bring them chocolate. Don't bring them weed. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. That's Except fair. for Fred and I, because if you persuade us, right, we yeah. we can't say no. <laughs> yeah. Just don't bring weed. Bring Just us don't bring bath weed. salts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it is Florida, man. You might not want to meet, yeah. meet us in the parking lot of the checker. <laughs> you never know what you'll get around yep. here. Right. So it could be it could be a little bit of and a little bit of everything. You know. What I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So this is your first time in Florida, or your first time? Second. Right? Time. Second time. In Tampa specifically, or just first no. time in Tampa. First time in Tampa. We've been That's to Florida once before, and we only played Gainesville. Okay. And you played so, Gainesville again last night. Correct. Said. How was so, that? So far, we've played Gainesville twice and the rest of Florida zero. zero times. <laughs> <laughs> and then yes. after this, where are you going? So you're going. So tonight's Tampa, and then well, after this, we're going to Newport Ritchie. Oh, really? Not to be confused with Port Ritchie. You're really playing. Mm-hmm. Where are you playing in Newport? Or old Ritchie? Port Ritchie. Yes. Uh, well, Great I think question. Old Port Ritchie is just called it's, Port Ritchie. It's just Port Ritchie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, they've they've been grandfathered in. <laughs> I don't know, um, where are we playing? The hub or is that tonight? No, the tonight's tonight. the hub. Uh, it, it, it's like a the Atlantic. No, that's the, we, that's, that's where we played last night. night. Oh. <laughs> we're playing. <laughs> well, uh, we're playing. We're, life, we're playing at a a. Uh, it's like a beer bar or something. It's called Ordinance One. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. In Newport Richie. Newport, Newport Richie. Okay. Yeah. 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 It was one of those. Stuff. Yeah. Newport Richie is interesting. I guess we we'll find out. We had an off day on tour and somebody hit us up and was like, "Do you want to play here?" And we said, "Sure." You know, we'll. We're a band. We can play. We can play a show. <laughs> <laughs> so that you're kind of in this area then for a couple days. Then yeah. for five days. For five days in Florida. Well, well in, in Florida. Florida. Yeah. But yeah, but like in the because t- Newport Richie is pretty close. Yeah, it's right Tampa down the road. Yeah. Metro region. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. we're here for like a couple of days, and then we just go to Orlando, which is not terribly far. No, not far I'm, at all. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and then Pensacola, which which is. Back up north. I didn't yeah. even know where that was until I I looked until like the day yeah. we left. Did somebody hit us yeah. up about that, or we were like, we got to book Pensacola. No, no, no. Someone hit. I, well, actually, I don't. I think someone hit us up about what Pensacola. What is it? Are Floridians like Southern Floridians? Just like that's basically yeah, Alabama. That's, that's that's South Georgia <laughs> at yeah, that point. Yeah, right, you know, right. Like it's, yeah, there's definitely a disconnect between Northern Florida and Southern Florida, which sure. even though we're like right in the middle of the state, we're still considered South Florida. Right, right. So, oh, interesting. yeah, like the University of South Florida is here in Tampa. Oh, right. Really? Even though we're in. Well, it's kind of the like central. a line. That yeah, you yeah, no, yeah. Indian we're, and we're right up below that line, if you will. Right, you know? right, right. So, is it like culturally a difference yeah, too? Yeah, I definitely would say so. Like South Florida um, definitely has a little bit more of that, like, northeastern type of like miami vibe you know like i would say miami is kind of like a 
northeast city. Like Miami might as well be New York, but okay. in Florida. Mm-hmm. Whereas like Tampa is more of like a Midwestern city. So like more like Chicago or like St. Louis or something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. And then Northern Florida is like, yeah, it might as well be Alabama. Like, you know, you could be in Pensacola or you could be in Mobile, Alabama. So you have the whole yeah. cultural right. swath of the United States exactly. in yeah. one yeah. state, yeah. Yeah. but it's just yeah. upside down. Well, that's, yes. Mm-hmm. Well, which is why when Florida like breaks off eventually, like, you know, when a hurricane <laughs> comes through and knocks us <laughs> yeah. off of right. like, physically off right. of the coast and we're just like kind of floating as an Island, we'll have a good representation of the Right. The that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Yeah. 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 And then we'll sink. Literally. That's next. <laughs> is there, so I, I'm from California originally, which I feel like also has like a really broad swath yeah. culturally. Yeah, yeah. And there's always just like the people who think California should, should secede or whatever. Is there a Florida secession movement? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, see, there you, might be. The inland Florida. You all seem chiller than California yeah. then. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, but it's a very similar vibe. Like Florida and California have a lot of similarities. You know, sure. we both have orange counties. We both have Disney. True. True. You know. True. Also, d- New York has an Orange County, though, right? Which always confuses me. That is fair. Where do, where are there oranges? In you're not. Yeah, you're not growing any not citrus. Yeah, in New York. Not that's not happening. Orange. Damn, I never thought about that. Dude, What's oranges? That? <laughs> <in> orange County. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's like it's orange. Yeah. Maybe. It's an orange. Yeah, I thought it was named after Clockwork Orange. <laughs> 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 that's what it is. Well, do you prefer Florida oranges or California oranges? Are there California oranges? Yeah, there's California oranges. I'm honestly not sure I, I, I know the difference. Mm. Do you know? Which makes me a fake California. I don't know the difference, but I am pretty particular when it comes to my strawberries. I always buy Florida strawberries if I can. No way. Okay. As opposed to California strawberries, which is what most of the country gets. Like, what are Florida strawberries like? They're a little like they're a little bigger. Kind of a little more. Yeah, everything's uh, like avocados from Florida are huge. Yeah, I don't like those. I'm not about Florida I'm not avocados. An avocado no offense, guy. but okay, fair enough. So, is yeah. the taste different or just the? Yeah, no, they're it's like a little bit crisper and a little bit like. It's a little more tart. Yeah, a little more tart. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That's, I would, that, I would eat that for sure. That yeah. sounds good. It's, it's like yeah. the oranges. The oranges are a little more tart. Here. Yeah. All right. Wait, it's flavor. colder, so it doesn't produce as much sugar. Yeah, when right, it gets right. colder, oranges and strawberries produce more sugar. Interesting. Um, I don't know why. Oh, oh, yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> no, actually, no. It's um, because uh, oysters do that too. In the, oh, yeah. yeah, like things like they produce sugars to get through harsh weather. Yeah. yeah. Mm. In order to store more nutrients for yeah. for the seeds or whatever when they drop. Yeah. Huh. Mm. Interesting. Boring. Yeah. <laughs> no, this is the re- this is the conversation that people come to our right. podcast for. Yeah. They want to hear Honestly, the minutia no, of see, this is like I like I don't yeah. listen to any music podcast, but there was a podcast about like why fruit tastes different <laughs> right. in certain places. I would totally listen to yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're pivoting now. We are now the official <laughs> Me, fruit. Yeah. Everybody wants bio. to hear about our I process. I only buy yeah. Iowa corn. Nebraska corn mm. can fuck right off. <laughs> <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> So, so uh, we're, we're kind of running out of time, but just to, to kind of bring it back to music a little bit, you guys are finishing out this Florida run, and then what's next? What's next for for Strange Ranger? Well, you're never gonna guess um, Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you're gonna be welcome there anymore. I think this podcast kind of yeah. well, sunk that like, one. Well, I feel like we're not gonna be welcome in. Uh, oh yeah, I don't know. I guess that's right. Because what were we? We were disparagingly <laughs> equating North Florida to Alabama or something. And, well, well, well to be fair, we're not saying that's a bad thing. That's just how it is, you know. Right. We should clarify for those of those listeners that mistakenly interpreted that as disparaging. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're playing in Birmingham okay. after Florida, and then uh, yeah, we're doing the rest of this tour. It's like going south to the and south, west. and then we're getting back home, and then we're sorry, I'm eating nuts, but they love football. Then we're going Alabama. back. We're going on. Then we're doing a short Midwest tour with Joyce Manor. We're fine. And then we're doing a East Coast tour with um <laughs> uh, with Chastity Belt, like East Coast and Midwest. Oh, Chastity Belt. We yeah. just had them on the podcast. Oh, oh no way. Cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 they rule. When okay. they were here in town. Tell them we They're said so what nice. up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well. If you've seen them before we do, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're good people, though. Really cool. Yeah, really, yeah no, really they're great. great band. Yeah. But yeah, so we're, we're excited about that stuff. Um, and then after that, I'm not really sure. We'll see what happens. After that, the world. Yeah. After that, the world. Yeah. Is there a new music on the horizon? Or are you just going to... Um. Yeah, we're know? actually just talking about that. Just kind of what our plans are as far as recording. So we're just kind of getting that. 
We've been goofing around in practice, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Writing a little tunes here and there. Writing you know a little saying? tunes here and there. Yeah. How does that, how does that start for you? Or do you kind of come up with the idea and bring it to the rest of the band or um yeah for the songs that Isaac describes a color and then we just kind <laughs> yeah. of go, <laughs> just go from there that makes sense think yeah. of autumn yeah yeah I actually usually incept an idea a tune in Isaac's <laughs> mind like in while he's dreams. sleeping yeah. and that's then, totally yeah. totally yeah. understandable yeah. and then we just let him believe that he wrote it <laughs> it's worked great so far I feel really good <laughs> it's riding high yeah that's that sounds amazing yeah yeah <laughs> so new music Finishing out the tour, taking over the world. Mm-hmm. Sure. Any other goals for a Strange Ranger? Um, did we cover world domination? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. That's yep, covered. Yep, that's on the list. Yep, world okay. domination. Um, have our writer fulfilled? Yep. Yeah, that'd be Andy cool. Andy Mint without the Mint. Right. Looking at you, small size clubs around the United <laughs> States. <laughs> yeah. uh, give us all those hundred <laughs> cap rooms <laughs> around the southeast. Give us our yeah. Shit. Get us some. <laughs> get you got some hummus and some Andy's mints. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right. It's yeah. just for Thomas. real. Right. But yeah, Fred I'm, really wants to open for the Foo Fighters. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> Never once said that. <laughs> Are you sure? Because Dave Grohl, there's a picture of Dave Grohl right there. No, and kinda, he is rocking. He's kind of looking at you. I feel like that hard. photo is meant for you. Yeah. Well. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> they they want to open for the Foo Fighters. So. <laughs> that's a, that's it's actually a pretty not. good. <laughs> that's actually a pretty interesting question to end this on. So, what would be if you could open for any band or any artist? Oasis. Oasis. Yeah, probably Oasis. I want if they would, Gallagher to tweet yeah. about us. Yeah, if that's we got if we repaired, if you signed it off XOLG. Hey, but why, also, why not? Why or what is it? Why me? Why not? XX, <laughs> yeah. Liam Gallagher. XXLG. Yeah. yeah. If we were if they wanted to if they liked our band so much that they repaired right. not only their band but their relationship, right? Mm. Just so they could tour just with so us, they yes. could op- have us. That open sounds like that's the dream. That is the dream. That is the yeah, dream. That'd yeah, that'd be cool. I like it. Play O2 with Oasis, and they're talking about how cool we are the whole time on yeah. stage. <laughs> yeah. All we want to do is bring oh, bring the Gallagher brothers back together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For their mom. Yeah. For their mom. It's tearing the For family the apart. I just I just yeah. want to get this band to the point that Fred describes Isaac as like a man with soup in a world full of forks. <laughs> that's what I want to happen. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's part of that, but yeah. I feel like we will, it's like we refuse to stop making records and touring until that day comes when, and yeah. that is yeah. the only thing that would make us stop is, <laughs> yeah, because no Oasis after reunion. After that, you know, yeah. if, if you brought Oasis back together, like that's it, you know. Well, I mean, the problem is the Foo Fighters already tried this, yeah, and they got resoundingly <laughs> rebuffed. Yeah, this is a whole thing recently. Like, uh, like uh, someone, I think it wasn't Dave, what's the drummer, the guy who's in Sunny Taylor Day? Hawkins. Yeah, Taylor Hawkins yeah. had. Yeah. Or, yeah, well, I, it, anyway. The bass he had, was in Sunny Day, right? I, yeah. f- Same shit. He, so, <laughs> I don't really like either of those bands. Um, yeah, sorry, my bad. Uh, but no, one of them had like a thing that was like, it was like Oasis, please reunite, or like they said it on mic or something. And then I think it was Liam who just tweeted like, how about instead o- or Foo Fighters just break up? No, I think <laughs> oh Noel, Noel Gallagher, I think specifically tweeted like at Dave Grohl that <laughs> right. he should Damn, stop dude. making music or <laughs> Foo Fighters should so break cool. up or something. Wow. Right. Are these are these little dried apples? Which I didn't know that that uh, yeah. the, right. how the Foo Fighters instigated that. So we just we just want to get that bitter. That's okay. our goal. I think that's a I think that's yeah. a pretty solid goal. I support cool. that 100. percent Cool. It'd be cool yeah. if like there was a petition of a bunch of bands who all agreed they would break up if Oasis got back together. It was like a hundred thousand fans. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So yeah. So we so we can get that started. So Isaac, yeah. would you sign that petition? I don't know. Could we we could like change our name again or something? <laughs> it, would, it would also have to. There would have to be some stipulations too, because Oasis, you know, obviously they break up and get back together all the time. So it's mm-hmm. like they would have to be together for a while if yeah, we're right. if you're gonna break up the band for that. Right. When's the last time they got back together? <sighs> Must have been like 2008 or 2009, something like that. Yeah. Okay. You guys know that one of the people in Ride was in Oasis and I, then beat and then. I think Liam yeah, Gallagher's doing, thing. You're pretty crazy. That oh. is crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Cool. So, <laughs> so the answer is Oasis. If you could open for any band, it'd be Oasis. Yeah. Oasis, right. uh, Matchbox 20. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm more on the Matchbox um, 20 spectrum myself. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, they're from Florida, right? Are they? 
Uh, I'm not. I'm like, not I don't know. Find this out. I feel like we man Rob Thomas is a is a Floridian. Yeah. What if you What if you had the opportunity to open for Rob Thomas solo? Is that okay, or does it have nah. to be Matt? Does he Does he play the Santana song? That's yeah, the question. I mean, yeah, he'd have to, right? I feel well, like if you it, go to a Rob Thomas show and he doesn't play smooth, you. But technically, he's like a feature on that, right. so it's like I don't know. Mm. I don't know what the etiquette is. There. I think you still I think it's can fine. play it. Yeah, it's yeah. Fine. you can still play that if you're Rob Thomas for sure. Okay. Yeah. I think if the Beatles ask us like really nicely. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> think about it really yeah. nicely yeah they better be polite about it mm -hmm. that's great all right well mm -hmm. any we're pretty much out of time now unfortunately as much as i'd love to hang out with you guys all all well, that's day simply which, unacceptable yeah There's so much more to say yeah i know yeah load ins at 8 p.m we have so much time to kill <laughs> yeah. I, wait can i ask you a question about tampa really quick yeah of in course regards to the cigars yes it's the cigar city right it is so what does that mean for the uh, casuals, uh, you know, why don't you give Jason with that a very mic? Casual level give of Jason that interest. mic, and then let him answer yeah. this question. I can, I can wax poetic about this. All right. Should um, we get a good, a good cigar to get the full Tampa experience? I mean, you can, yeah. Uh, I can tell you, I can tell you all the places to go for a good cigar. Oh, please. Um, but Tampa is a cigar city because in the late 1800s, someone came from Tampa to Key West to invest in it becoming a cigar industry city. It was pretty much a wasteland, so he bought. A bunch of large brick buildings, a bunch of shotgun homes. He employed a bunch of Cuban and Italian immigrants and gave them a 25 cent a month mortgage. Um, yeah. He employed them. He fed them. Uh, he educated them while they were working. So Tampa got an affluent character of Cuban and Italian and German immigrants um, that also popularized Cuban sandwiches, salami, and cigars. Oh, wow. um, yeah, so Tampa at one point was doing something like 200 million cigars a month wow. um, for the entire world. It was the number one producer of cigars. Now it's the cigar culture capital of the world. Okay. Well, cool. I haven't had a cigar since yeah. I, grew up, I grew up in a hot tub when I was like 15. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you got seven hours in Tampa. And, yeah. And some of yeah. Some of the best cigar shops in the world are here. So if there's something you should experience in Tampa, it's probably a cigar shop. Okay. Cool. Yeah. And Jason's really the Let's cigar in Cigar City Radio. Like he's the guy that knows all the cigar the stuff. Cigar guy. So, yeah. and all of it. I'm the city. Yeah. Cigar in the city. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So yeah, he's the guy to know. Just just hang out with him for the next like six hours. Uh, You'll be fine. If I didn't have a date with my girlfriend. <laughs> oh, there you go. I don't like sleeping on the couch. <laughs> Understandable. All right. Well, any final thoughts from Strange Ranger? I think that, I think we've had a plenty of final thoughts, but just yeah. you know, making sure. Yeah, it's been like fifteen minutes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. fifteen minutes. Of this whole podcast has been final thoughts. Yeah. Nick's nuts are good. The apples are a good touch. Apples are a good touch. I only figured that out mm -hmm. well into eating them, and I was like, mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Well, it's I been cannot great. think of anything to say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's oh, wait, I, I've got a final thought. Uh, Rob Thomas was born in Germany, okay. Landstuhl, Germany. Okay, and then, well, where did and, Matchbox Twenty form? Where did he grow up? He uh, they moved. They went to South Carolina afterwards. So probably like around here. But still, born in Germany. Where did Matchbox Twenty form? <laughs> You're asking this like he's a, Siri. <laughs> All right, Isaac, talk about Isaac. Talk about apples for two minutes while I look this up. <laughs> anyway, anyways. Yeah. Right. He's doing yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah that's, just that's tweet at us and we'll tell you yeah, where Matchbox Twenty Four. Yeah, yeah, there yeah. we go. Leave it on a cliffhanger, right? Yeah. We'll have to, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, cool. Well, thanks, guys. Thanks so much for joining yeah, us. Yeah, thanks a lot. Good talking to you. Yeah, this is really.